So I do a lot of 3D printing, sometimes for practical purposes, sometimes just for fun. I often want to share what I print, but doing a dedicated video on every single print that I do just isn't feasible. So I'm going to try out a new monthly series, despite a terrible track record for monthly series on this channel, where I showcase time lapses of the models I've printed for the past month. And if things go well, there may even be multiple episodes. Uh, I'm going to link all the models down in the description and have print settings up on the screen to give actual information beyond my play-by-play -play that you're about to hear. But enough intro, let's just dive right in. So first up, well, this is a bit meta since it's a GoPro mount specifically for the Prusa for time lapses, and all of these time lapses, except for this one of course, was shot using this mount. I've actually been in search of the ideal time-lapse setup of a GoPro for the Prusa basically since I built the printer, and I found this model by chance after hearing about designer Michael Fanta on Twitter. They just started working for Prusa, and I browsed their My Mini Factory profile and found this mount amongst all the models. I'm actually going to make a video soon on 3D printing time-lapse setups where I talk about this model a little bit more in detail, and also other things I've tried before. So next is this owl, which is such an impressive model, and it's been remixed quite a bit on Thingiverse. The main reason I printed it was actually because I saw a very similar low-poly owl statue for sale at Joanne Fabrics amongst their fall decor items, and I was with my mom, and she really liked that owl, but then I showed her actually in the store the model on Thingiverse because I, I remembered it, it looked so familiar. So she actually asked if I would print her that owl instead, um, but the original version, not a low poly version. This is also why I printed it in orange, it's one of her favorite colors, but it was a very long print, uh, made a bit longer by the fact that it's printed with a 0.1 layer height. Models like this that have a lot of detail are also going to be long prints anyway. I like to print at that lower la layer height to really get the detail to show up, and then it really makes it feel like the whole process is worth it. And I just really love how this owl turned out. Alright, and this is the DigiBadge Minis case uh, printing. In case you missed it, I did a video on this badge earlier this month on the channel. Uh, it printed really easily, and uh, I couldn't resist printing it in purple, obviously. Okay, this is really fun. This is Kermit the Frog. Uh, Kermit was the big print for this month. It's another great model by Red Dad Steve on Thingiverse. His models are just super fun to print and assemble. Uh, I did a bit of an experimentation with this one uh, where you may have heard about the Amazon Basics filament that just got released. Well, they have this green that looks like it might be close to the Hatchbox Green PLA, which has been sold out for months, and it happens to be my favorite shade of green. So I wanted to try it out uh, for this print, since, you know, it's not easy being green, and I was really unimpressed with it. First of all, I thought the color was a bit undersaturated, just in general. It looks really bland. Um, I also had some issues with retraction that seemed to be caused by the spool that was not really wrapped that great. Uh, I've seen other people post successful prints with the Amazon Basics, and I've also seen people praise it, but personally I'm just not that into it based on that one spool I got. Uh, to the point that I actually reprinted Kermit's head and body, both of which are not short prints, with my remaining Hatchbox Green PLA, and I was a lot happier of how everything looked even how it felt, really, uh, with the Hatchbox Green and the resulting Muppet model. Uh, the one tricky part of the assembly for this model is getting the top of the mouth in place, but there was a warning on the Thingiverse page about that, so nothing I wasn't expecting, but still a little tricky. So this box you're seeing print now is actually a holder for the Digital Circuits PCBs by Dave Astells. 
I've got a long overdue video on these kits coming up. Uh, this was actually a reprint since the first ones I printed had some bed adhesion issues so one side of the corners were kind of curled. Uh, currently my printer is dialed in pretty well, knock on wood, uh, for its first layers so I decided to just redo them since they're a quick print and I want them to look good for the video. So this next one's a bit of a practical print. Uh, I really like this pie case, I kind of came across it um, randomly on Thingiverse. It fits nicely into the PCB mounting holes uh, with a nice snug fit and the bottom is ventilated with a fun bullseye pattern. So I printed two of these for now, but I'm also planning to print some in blue to match the Tinkerboard's PCB. So this next print, uh, I felt like it was time to upgrade my soldering irons case. The original case was actually one of the first things I printed, but this one is a little bit sturdier and it involves magnets. Who doesn't love magnets? I have one of those little TS-100 iron, so this case fits that along with three tips, the Allen wrench you need to change out the tips, and the little spongy stand thingy, which I know is like not great, but whatever, I use it. <laughs> um, I printed it in pink because basically all of my soldering accessories are in pink in this exact filament, so now everything matches, which is obviously the most important thing when it comes to doing electronics. Now these little blue things are some camera mounts that actually fit over a mic stand. They're modeled so that you use them as an overhead camera rig, you just need the quarter screw for it, um, which is my goal with them, specifically with my soldering videos, which need their production game brought up a little bit. So I'm hoping I can bring my little stand, my little mic stand with me that I actually usually use for micing up my guitar amp, uh, throw my GoPro on there and get some better shots. And finally, this fun little penguin model was created by Luby 3D for Snow Labs 3D, which is a filament company. If you aren't familiar with Luby 3D, you totally should be because she specializes in modeling support free models and also models that feature articulation. Uh, and this penguin has both of those features. It's uh, head, tail, legs, and wings all move after printing, which is really impressive considering it just prints in place, no supports, and then it can do that afterwards. Like that's quite the feat. Uh, the one thing I noticed is that the head was bobbling a little bit, doing a little dance during the last few layers, but still printed fine. Uh, I'm gonna call that a feature. Um, nothing like a dancing penguin on your print bed. And that's what I've been printing this month. It was a nice mix of practical and impractical models. Uh, the Prusa also behaved itself quite nicely, knock on wood. So if you liked this video, toss me a thumbs up. And if you have any thoughts or suggestions for this series, please let me know down in the comments. Again, all the models will be linked down in the description. I encourage you to print them and throw a make up on Thingiverse or Mind Mini Factory. It helps support the model maker. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing for more content like this. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.